Hello everyone and welcome to another C++ Beginners video. In this video I wanted to talk to you about functions and I'll try to explain how they work and the different things you can do with them in C++. So uh, first let's get started by creating our empty project and let's call this one functions. There we go. Okay and create our main function. So main And main. Okay, so functions usually consist of four main parts. Um, the first part would be a return uh, type. So as you can see here, the main function, the entry point for our program has an int return type. And that means when it's returning, this is why we put return zero here because it's, re it's returning an integer. So functions with an int return type would return an integer. Functions with float return types would return a float and so on. So when you're creating your function, you just need to think of what kind of return type you want that function to return, what kind of value you want it to give, you, to give back to you. Uh, next up is main. So main is our function name here. So um, you can give a function any name that you want, usually in C++. Um, Function starts with an upper case letter except for the entry point, which seems kind of odd, but that's the way it works. Uh, it's not a must that it starts with uh, a capital letter, but it's preferable that you use a capital letter for function to differentiate them from variables. And finally, as you can see here, you have the two brackets. In here, uh, you put in the parameters. We'll look at these uh, later on in the video. And finally, between the two curly brackets are the function is the function body. So uh, whatever logic that you want this function to do goes inside the body in between these two curly brackets. So let's include IO stream to put a few things. And we can get started. Okay, so let's say we want to add two numbers and output them onto the console. For example, we can do STD see out 4 plus 5 and then std see out well std end line and we'll put std cn.get so our console doesn't close and try to run this and see what happens as you can see it put 9 here so it's giving us the the sum of these two numbers and it's outputting it. But if we want another sum to be output on another one and another one, we have to write this whole line over and over again. So how can we make this easier for ourselves? Well, one way to do it is by using functions. So for example, we can say void because this function will not return anything and just say sum int x and as you can see in between these two brackets the main function right now is not taking any parameters in but our sum needs values to be entered into the function so you when you want a when you want a value to be um, to be available inside the function you need to pass it in as a parameter so we have our uh, or we can say int a of course you can name your parameters whatever you want just try to make it descriptive so you know what you're dealing with so uh, int a and int b and we want to add both a and b and output them onto the screen what we can do now is say std c out a plus b and then std and line there we go now we can accomplish this same task by just calling our sum function so we can say sum a, which would be 4, and B, which would be 5. So, um, as you can see here, A and B, well, A will be assigned 4, B will be assigned 5, and then it's going to go in here and say add A plus B and output them onto the console. So if we go ahead and run our program, there we go. So it has a 9 here. And this makes it a lot easier for us to do 
multiple uh, things of the same type without writing way too much. For example, now we can keep summing numbers as many times as you want. So you can say sum 9 and 12 and run that and there we go 21. So this is the main point of functions is to move your logic so that as you can see here it's a lot more readable to say um, sum 4 and 5. You know that you're going to be summing these two numbers whereas this one is just saying std c out a plus b and then std and l. Um, it's much more readable. If somebody else is using your code, you can tell them to just use the sum function instead of just uh, having multiple lines like this in your code. So uh, that's pretty much a quick rundown of what a function is. But of course, there is, there is a lot more that a function can do in C++. So let's say you don't want to add up two ints. You want to add up two floats instead. What would you do then? Well, that's when function overloading comes in. For example, you can say void sum with the exact same name, but you give it float A and float B. And then std c out A plus B and std end up. So function overloading is when two functions have the same name, but they have different parameters and the compiler will pick the function with the right parameters. For example, if we say here uh, 9.5 and 12.2, for example, um, of course, we need to say that both of these are floats. So we need to add F at the end. And as you can see, it has no issues with it. If you hover over it, it says right here, some int A and int B. And over here, some float A and float B. It figures out which function that you're trying to call. And that way, you can have a function with the same name, multiple functions with the same name, but different parameters that can accomplish the same task. Um, of course, there are even easier ways to do this, but we won't get into these in the beginner's tutorials. Uh, but just for future reference, these are templating. So when you put something as a template, it can be used as multiple types or whichever types are that it's given. It applies uh, these the, the rules that you give it. But for the time being, as you can see, you can function overload so and have multiple types given into the same function, same function name. Okay, so this brings us to, oh, we haven't tried this out yet. And as you can see, 21.7 and 9. So this one outputs a float and this one outputs a, um, an int. So this takes us to our return types. As you can see here, void means this function will not be returning anything. And if you want to exit a void function before the entire function was executed, you just say return. And if you do this, it will return right here. It will not do this line. And this is useful, for example, if you want to put an if statement and that if statement um, maybe it returns because some of the value of, of uh, the values that you gave that you gave it are um, illegal so you couldn't pass them in and it quits before any crashes happen so uh, returns are pretty useful but just remember that for a void function you can just say return you don't need an actual value to leave the function um, of course in a function that you let it run throughout its um, uh, all its code lines it will just exit through the end bracket. Okay, so moving on to return types. And let's make a function that returns something. For example, uh, we can say int max, int a, and int b. And as you might have guessed, this returns the maximum of a and b, whichever is higher. So you can say if a is more than b, return a else return b it's good to have when at least when you're first starting off it's very good to have uh, curly brackets 
uh, where your if statements are, even if they're only for one line. Once you're uh, more experienced with it and you know that you're not going to need more than one line, you can go ahead and uh, not include the curly brackets for single line statements. But for now, uh, it's good to make it a habit to always put the curly brackets for your if statements. So what this is saying is if A is more than B, give us back A. Otherwise, give us back B. So what we can say here now is std see out the maximum of let's say 96 and 14 and then std and l. So if this is working correctly, it should give us 96. And if we run it, and as you can see here, it's returning back the one that we need. So in this return here, and this function value becomes now 96, and this 96 is given to stdc out. So this is return type for function. So when you're creating a function, you just need to think of what uh, return types do I need? Do I need this function to return something or not? If you need it to return something, then you give it a return type, and that return type depends on the type of the thing that you want to return back. Otherwise, you can, um, you can give it a void if you don't want it to return anything. Of course, parameters and return types don't always have to be the same either. Uh, for example, We can do something like boolean. So a boolean value is either true or false. And we can say equal. And equal takes in two ints, int a and int b. And this is returning a equals equals b. So if a is equal to b, it's, gonna, it's going to return true. If a is not equal to b, it's going to return false. And let's try uh, equal um, 12 and 12, for example, and run that. And there we go. So, um, of course, for uh, a Boolean, this is because it's converting the Boolean into, uh, into an integer because that's just the way that this is working. But if we do something, for example, like if equal int a and, well, well, well uh, 12 and 12, if 12 is equal to 12, we want to say stdc out, and so we can make a more descriptive equal. There we go. And if we run it, as you can see, it says equal right here because this evaluated to true and it's, it went in here and said equal. If we give it 12 and 96 and we say else, stdc out not equal, not equal. So um, that covers the return type for a function, the parameters for a function, and naming a function. So finally, that takes us to the last part about functions for now for the beginner tutorials. And um, that would be passing a value by reference. So far, we have been passing in values by, uh, we have been passing in our values by value. Passing by value just means take whatever we're passing in, copy it into this, and use this as a brand new value, but starting off at, let's say, um, so for max, we have, we're not using it. So for equal, for example, int a, it starts off as being 12. Int b starts off as being 96, and it's own, it's, its own standalone variable. What does passing by reference now do? For example, uh, if we do void increment 
int x. But for passing by reference now, instead of just saying int x, you can put an ampersand at the end of int. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. And we can say x plus plus. So it takes s, x and it adds uh, plus one to it. So now if you go here and say int x equals 15, increment x, and then we need to output x. So std c out x, and then std end up. Maybe we can even have it here as well, so we know what x looks like before and after. And we can run. So x starts off as being 15. We output it onto the console and then increment it by one in our function that takes in a value by reference. And then finally, uh, we output it again. So if we run this, as you can see, x starts off at being 15. It increments inside here and then it outputs, well, if we check it again afterwards, it's 16 instead. Keep in mind, if you don't pass it in by reference, the value on the outside is not changed. For example, if we use function overloading and say void increment, but only int x now, uh, this is going to be ambiguous. So we can do something like decrement, so decrement takes x minus minus. So um, this takes in a value and decrements it by one, but it takes it in by value, not by reference. So if we say decrement here, if it does affect it on the inside, if it's passed in by value, we should have 15 and then decrements and it becomes 14. But as you will see, this is not the case. This is 15. It decrements, but it stays 15. If we check x in here, for example, if we take std c out and say x in function and then output x on here, As you can see, x is 15 here. When it goes inside the function, it's 14, as long as this function is running, because this new x over here inside the parameters is a brand new x. And then once it exits, our original x out here, it's still 15, because it was not passed in by reference. So that covers um, functions, how they work, their main uh, parts, and what each part does. Um, just to recap, a function is made up of return types, a name, and parameters. As Of course, you can have as many parameters as you want. You can have different types of parameters, so you can have an int x and a float y. You can have any different types of parameters together in the same, uh, between the same brackets. And finally, the function's body. And a function must return the same type as its return type. So over here we're returning booleans, over here we're returning ints because the function type is int. For a void function, you don't need a return, but if you do need a retur to return out of the function at any point, you can just say return, and that's it. So uh, I really hope this video helped you out. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave them below, and I will see you in the next video.